This nation, how can you conquer this nation? How can you beat this Jalut, this Goliath? How can you crack his skull? How, how, how? Them. This is the problem. You beat my brothers once, you beat them twice, beat them thrice, beat them 30 times, 300 times, but you haven't solved the problem. It's technology which is in your favor. But technology is not a closed shop. Sooner or later, the Arabs will also acquire technology. Then I said, sooner or later, this America will let you down. You are beating my brothers because of technology. Superior technology, superior education. The Jews, they admit that the average Arab soldier is a better specimen of mankind, manhood, than the average Jew. He's a better man, man, from manliness point of view. But he's getting beaten. Why? So it's the technology, the machines that he's wielding. That's beating him. And then again, he says, we are not fighting the Jews. Every time we go into battle, we're fighting America. No, it's America. It's not the Jew. They can see, man, through the satellites what's going on there. The movements, movements of dark patches. This is some metal moving. Armored cars, tanks moving, moving, getting closer to the Suez. They want the Jews. This is the Arabs are on the move. <laughs> and America, direct intervention through the Azores. Men and material right into the battlefield. Turn the tables. And the Jew, you see, Ghulam and Alima, highly intellectual. He's always catching us out. He's always catching us out. You enter into a treaty. That resolution was a 242 or whatever it is, United Nations, man, he's got you. Anything else, he's got you. The intellect. Intellect, highly intellectual, even today. They are the leaders. Allah has made them so. Now, this is the genius of the Jew. Heads I win, tails you lose. Either way he loses. Heads I win, tails you lose. Same. Conflict or conciliation. What do you want? You Muslims, what do you want? Come on, come on, come on. What will you have? Conflict? To the audiences, you see, these are troublemakers, the terrorists, you know, <laughs> the fundamental. You see, they want trouble, they want to fight. We want peace, they want war. In the eyes of the audience, never mind how right you are, you are already lost. It says, conciliation, they say, then why are you throwing stones? Huh? Why are you throwing stones? Either way, you're caught. The topic, how does it come about? Arabs in Israel, conflict or conciliation. That topic, that subject, that construction of the topic. How does it come about? Well, it happened to you one morning at the height of the Israeli Blitzkrieg. You know that lightning war? Hitler had Blitzkrieg into Poland, into France, into Russia. That Blitzkrieg, you know, Hitler. That Blitzkrieg that the Jews applied in in, in the Lebanon in 1982, at the height of that blitzkrieg, I get a phone call from the University of Natal, a professor, Professor Mason, head of the Department of Law. He phones me and says, look, the Jewish students at the university, they are inviting the Israeli Council General in South Africa to come and speak to the students about Palestine. And would like to know from you whether you would also be prepared to participate. They like to have, this is not fair, only the Jew has his say. We want also a point of view of the Muslims. Would you be prepared to come? I said, yes. So, how do you suggest that we advertise this topic? So, it occurred to me, I said, look, pros, the pros and cons of Israel. Oh, this is beautiful. The pros and cons, the for and against. He is for, I am against, we discuss this. And let the students go home and think for themselves. This is beautiful, beautiful. Right. A few days later he comes back to me, he says, no, the Jews, they say they don't like the topic. <laughs> they don't like your topic. Simple, neutral, pros and cons of Israel. He said, they say you must, Arabs and Israel, conflict or conciliation. I said, agreed. Now there's a catch. There's a catch in the title. The Jews are very ingenious. They have always been. I don't know whether you know. Allah describes the Jews in the Quran, the progenitor of the Jews, Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam. But before that, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, the birth of Ismail alayhi salam. Allah gives the good news to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and he says, I promise you a son, he will be Ghulam and Halima. 
اسماعیل ول بی غلام حلیما ہمبل سبمسیو فیلو and the second time the news is given to him 13 years later about the birth of ishaq alayhi salam he said ghulam an alima a knowledgeable fellow a highly intellectual fellow you think allah is just trying to rhyme it ghulam an halima ghulam an alima he's trying to just rhyme it for you no 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 there's something in it when he says ghulam an halima look at the arabs <laughs> despite all their barbarism you know of the pre-islamic arabs hmm? but they had this quality when you come right with him you accept him he will give his life for you he is humble submissive the true salt of the earth and the jew and the jew you see ghulam and alima highly intellectual he is always catching us out he is always catching us out you enter into a treaty that resolution was a 242 or whatever it is united nations man he's got you anything else he's got you the intellect intellect highly intellectual even today they are the leaders allah has made them so so highly intellectual people they were so also in the time of hazrat isa alayhi salam again and again they came to hazrat isa alayhi salam jesus christ in the bible in their bible it says they come to him they said master in the hebrew language rabbi molana sheikh imam molana rabbi master we caught this woman in the act act of adultery what must we do to her they caught the woman in the act where is the man you caught the woman in the act what was she doing where was the man no no the man is not there is this woman they want to catch him out if he says according to the law of moses in the book of leviticus in the bible it says the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death that's the verdict of the man of god stone the woman to death and the man but is not there and the man must be stoned to death and adultery was not a capital crime in the roman empire so they would stone this woman to death and if they, they were caught out he said why did you kill this woman instead of a messiah says so now he's in conflict with the government if he says let her go then he says look this is not a man of god because the torah says that the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death either way he loses heads i win tails you lose masters of geniuses but jesus is also a jew he's also a jew hmm? beautifully he solves the problem beautifully he says let him who is free from free from sin cast the first stone and he turned the tables on them but now this is the genius of the jew heads i win tails you lose either way i can give you dozens of examples from the bible how they confronted jesus again and again master what must we do master they know the answer master must we pay tribute to caesar or not must we pay taxes or not If he says pay taxes, then they say, "Look, this is not the Messiah we are waiting for. He is a stooge of the government." You see, huh? he can't be the Messiah. Rejected. If he says don't pay, they won't pay. If they are caught, he says, "Why didn't you pay your taxes?" He says, "Our Messiah says so." He is in conflict with the government. Either way, he loses. Heads I win, tails you lose. Same. Conflict or conciliation? What do you want? You Muslims, what do you want? Come on, come on, come on. What will you have? Conflict. to the audiences you see these are troublemakers the terrorists you know <laughs> the fundamental you see they want trouble they want a fight we want peace they want war in the eyes of the audience never mind how right you are you are already lost this is conciliation this is then why are you throwing stones huh why are you throwing stone either way you caught heads i win tails you lose but i said okay we want an opportunity to have our message delivered so alhamdulillah we accepted the title arabs and israel conflict of conciliation and with dr lotem of the israeli embassy in south africa we had a debate it was a great debate but some <coughs> the topic arabs and israel conflict of conciliation now i want to read to you a statement made by a jew an austrian german jew 
Leopold Weiss. He was a reporter for the German newspaper Frankfurter Zeitung. In 1922, he goes to Jerusalem. And the Jews had a gathering, private gathering. Dr. Weizmann was the head. Ben-Gurion was there. And this other ben Begin and all. They were all young men. They were all there. And they were planning on the map. A map of Palestine was laid out. And Weizmann was saying that now we'll take this like that. And this is how we'll take this place. And so after listening to all this, this young Jew, he was 22 years old, a reporter for this newspaper. He said, but what about the Arabs? So Weizmann said, so what about the Arabs? He says, you know, there are a majority in the country. So Weizmann says, they won't be majority for long. They won't be majority for long. So he says, now, it struck him that these people, you know, they want to share out a people's land. They are there, they are living there, and they rob them of their land. So he said, he's saying, in his later on he writes a book and he says, how was it possible? I wondered, how was it possible for a people endowed with so much creative intelligence as the Jews? He's a Jew himself. There is no doubt about it. So much creative intelligence as the Jews to think of the Zionist Arab conflict in Jewish terms alone. Did they not realize that the problem of the Jews in Palestine could, in the long run, be solved only through friendly cooperation with the Arabs? Didn't they realize that? Were they so hopelessly blind to the painful future which their policy must bring to the struggles, bitterness, and the hatred to which the Jewish island, even if temporarily successful, would forever remain exposed in the midst of a hostile Arab sea? And how strange, I thought, this young Jew says, that a nation which had suffered so many wrongs in the course of its long and sorrowful diaspora dispersion was now in single-minded pursuit of its own goal, ready to inflict a grievous wrong on another nation, and a nation too that was innocent of all that past Jewish suffering. Such a phenomena, I knew, was not unknown to history, but it made me nonetheless very sad to see it enacted before my eyes. How does it happen that such a highly intellectual community, wallah they are, that they can think so selfishly and so brutally what Hitler had done to them, now they are prepared to do to another nation and who were not responsible for their sufferings. How is it possible? It is possible. People can be brainwashed. You can be brainwashed. We all can be brainwashed. I know the Americans don't like the term brainwashing, brainwashed. They say programmed. We all can be programmed. See? I was corrected in my first trip to America. I was telling the, the, the audience in Berkeley University, said, you have been brainwashed. So one young man stood up, says, no, not brainwashed, programmed. I said, sorry, from now on, you programmed, programmed. No, people can be programmed. So these Jews, they saw my adverts, they contacted my organizers, they said, look man, this Mr. D. Dad, he would be prepared to come and speak to us. So my organizers asked me, the Jews want you to go and speak to them. I said, right, to me it's an opportunity, wallah, it is an opportunity. We must look for opportunities, we must create opportunities. Somehow get, deliver the message, man, deliver the message. No man who the person is. I have delivered lectures in synagogues. I have delivered lectures in churches. I have delivered lectures in Hindu temples. Wallah. Look, our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi around the Kaaba. All those idols were there and he used to preach to them. Why shouldn't we? Opportunity. The guy calls you to a church. Go and talk, man. Temple, synagogue, go and talk. Deliver the message. The best you can. So the Jews went to me. Yes, all right. Students of the University of Cape Town, they had purchased a church hall and they were going to Invite me. That's how I went. Talk. Let us disabuse their minds. Talk, reason. So I said, you know, that was after the 67 war. I said, you know, you defeated my brothers once. You defeated them twice. First, 48. Then 56. Then 67. 70, 73 hadn't happened then. So you defeated my brothers thrice. And you can defeat them 30 times. But you wouldn't have solved the problem. 
the problem still remains. I said the Arabs can afford to lose a hundred battles. They can afford to lose a hundred battles. But you can't afford to lose one. You know that? If one you lose, I said it's finished for you. It's good. You're finished for good. Yes, he'll be wiped out. Once he loses one, he's finished for good. There's no more Jews left if you lose. And you can't tell me in your history that you never lost a battle. That you'll never lose. You are beating my brothers because of technology. Superior technology. Superior education. The Jews, they admit that the average Arab soldier is a better specimen of mankind, manhood, than the average Jew. He's a better man, man, from manliness point of view. But he's getting beaten. Why? Because he is a standard six Johnny, the Arab soldier. That guy is a matriculant. See, every soldier. So now that guy can carry out instructions far better than you. So it's the technology, the machines that he's wielding. That's beating him. And then again, so we are not fighting the Jews. Every time we go into battle, we're fighting America. No, it's America. It's not the Jew. 1973, for the first time, the Arabs took the initiative. First time in history. Previously, every time they were talking, we'll kill the Jew, we'll fight him, and preemptive strike. You talk, 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 he'll give it to you. You talk, 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 he'll give it to you. There's a saying, twice armed is he whose cause is just, but thrice armed is he who gets in first. He's triply armed. Like. You talk, you are in the right, you are in hack, but I give it to you, one, go flying, it's finished. You finish. You hack, you're in hack, but hack, finish, you're gone. Knocked out. This is what's happening. So, for the first time, the Arabs took the initiative. 73, the Ramadan war, the October war. Hmm? America won the Jews. I don't know whether you people know. America won the Jews that the Arabs are on the move. They can see, man, through the satellites what's going on there. The movements, movements of dark patches. This is some metal moving. Armored cars, tanks moving, moving, getting closer to the Suez. They won the Jews. This is the Arabs are on the move. They took it lightly. The Jews said, no, these Arabs, man, they can't, they can't fight. They can't fight without shouting. They'll have to say, we'll hit you and, we'll, and then we'll give it to them. But first time, Sada, he played a stroke of genius. And silently, he did the job. He crossed the bar lev line and into the Sinai. He had the Jews by the throat. First time. <laughs> in America, direct intervention through the Azores. Men and material, right into the battlefield. Turn the tables. So what do you do? This is the situation. Every time you go to war, you're fighting America. And this giant, I'm watching it. I'm seeing his, his airports. You know, all these airports, I'm traveling from place to place. I say, man, this nation, how can you conquer this nation? How can you beat this Jalut, this Goliath? How can you crack his skull? How, how, how? No, 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 don't despair. His size is his undoing. His might is, is his undoing. But now you have to use psychology. You have to learn now techniques, how to get under his skin, how to talk to him. You have to learn, my dear brothers and sisters, you have to learn how to talk. A frontal fight, no hope. No hope. <laughs> to, you can't outgun the fellow and you can't uh, out ungrain the fellow, you can't do anything. But intellectually, you can do the job. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran that is given you a deen. So, he has sent his messenger with guidance, الحق, and with the religion of truth, that it may prevail, overcome, and supersede every other deen. Now, the mushrik might not like it. And he repeats the same formula again. And he ends by saying, And enough is Allah is as a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you, rubbish. You don't do the job, he says, He'll substitute in your place another people. Then they won't be like you, rubbish. You can do the job. But now telling them, this is the problem. You beat my brothers once, you beat them twice, beat them thrice, beat them 30 times, 300 times, but you haven't solved the problem. It's technology which is in your favor. But technology is not a closed shop. Sooner or later, the Arabs will also acquire technology. Then I said, sooner or later, this America will let you down. It can happen. America can let you down. When it suits them, they'll let you down. <laughs> they let so many nations down. 
And it doesn't suit them. She, it suited them to help the Kuwaitis. They helped them, right? Suited them. Why? Well, if Kuwait was producing sausages, you think these guys would have gone there? Huh? No, no. If it suits, I said, one day, these guys will let you down. And then, what is your position? I said, 